Paul, I'm here with the host of SGT Bull 07, the YouTube channel, as well as SGTReport.com. Sean, thank you so much for being on the show with us today. Daniel, thank you, man. I really appreciate it. And uh, you sort of inspired me at the beginnings of my channel, and you were having all your success and, and uh, really uh, giving some great commentary about economics, Keynesian versus Austrian economics, and I learned a lot from you, so thank you. Well, I appreciate that. I, I can tell you I check your site regularly at sgtreport.com. I love that site, and it's become uh, something that I regularly check in the morning. I check my Drudge Report, Zero Hedge, and SGT Report. Sean, if you could just let us know, what I'd really like to talk to talk about is not only what's going on in the overall economy, but people becoming active citizens. You have a very successful YouTube channel. You have a very successful blog. When did you decide to go from concerned citizen to what you have now where you have, you've interviewed some of the smartest people in the world, you have a great blog. What was it that, that made you go from concern to active? Well, it's kind of a, a long story. I'll give you the cliff note versions if I can. You know, my friend Chris Dwayne, in his Greatest Truth Never Told series, re reminded me of Charles McKay's quote, men go mad in herds and only come to their senses slowly and one by one. Um, I was working for a Fortune 50 corporation, which everybody would recognize um, the name of, and uh, I was a mid-level executive uh, for the better part of a decade. Um, I was making, you know, hundred thousand dollars a year, um, you know, plus benefits and, um, you know, working in the marketing department for this very successful company, I was, I was really living the dream, Daniel. And, um, there was somebody in that marketing department who pushed me on the nine 11 issue. And, and he thought nine 11, uh, was a false flag operation. I thought that was crazy. So the more I looked into that issue, the more I began to wake up. And so it's been sort of a long process, but um, I was working with people, and we all know folks, who can't wake up. They're part of the herd, and they need to wake up one by one. They just haven't done it yet. And so when you're working in an environment like that, you kind of need to drink the corporate Kool-Aid um, to, to make it work for you personally. And when you wake up to these things, when you wake up to the Federal Reserve System, and you wake up to the inherent criminality built into our, our uh, republic, you have a hard time drinking the Kool-Aid. So it was time for me, after a decade, to move on. And um, so basically, to answer your question, you know, my awakening happened slowly from about 2003 to 2004, 2005, and when I learned about the Federal Reserve by watching Bill Stills, The Money Masters, uh, and watching some other documentaries, um, I really woke up. Many people, Sean, are sitting at home, they're reading your blog, they're watching our videos, they're reading the news, they're, maybe they've picked up a book like Crash Proof or something. They're telling their friends and their family, they're ignoring them, they're laughing at them, they're blowing them off. What are some things you have found that people can do to help educate others, to mobilize people uh, about the dangers facing humanity due to the central control from bankers uh, of having complete control of our money. Here's a quote from Ed Edmund Burke, which goes like this. All that's necessary for evil to triumph is for good men and women to do nothing. And, you know, my motivation between starting, you know, my blog and, and making videos was to inform people that there is a huge problem and they need to get active or we're going to lose our liberties. And, you know, most recently, Daniel, I've really been uh, astounded by the illusions under which we all live. And you were talking about the people that, you know, can't wake up and don't know what's going on. This society that we all live in is built on illusions, and I've assembled 10 illusions, okay, 10 examples of this illusion, this false paradigm under which we live. Can I share those with you? Please, please do. Okay, so jump in as, as you wish, but here's the first illusion. Tim Geithner, the former head of the New York Federal Reserve Bank, supervised, while at the Federal Reserve in New York, the AIG bailout, which funded, which funneled billions to the big investment banks. And, you know, he talks about a strong dollar policy now as, as he's the Secretary of the Treasury. Meanwhile, the Treasury borrows more than $1 trillion each year from the Federal Reserve to fund our criminal government. And to add to that, the former Secretary of the Treasury was Hank Paulson who used to run Goldman Sachs. So there's one illusion. Here's number two. $15 trillion in national debt. 
$60 trillion in counting if we count unfunded liabilities, all of which are unrepayable. Number three, it's an illusion, the Federal Reserve System. It's neither federal nor does it have any reserves. Number four, the war on terrorism. As a result of one day out of America's history on 9-11, we're given the DHS, the TSA, full body scanners in the airports and the presumption that every American is a potential terrorist. And on top of that, $4 trillion flushed down the toilet in Iraq and Afghanistan alone. Number five, they tell us that Al-Qaeda hit us on 9-11, so we all need to give up our liberties in exchange for security, which, as Ben Franklin warned us, would result in our having neither liberty or security. Oh, and Daniel, by the way, NATO, with the full cooperation and support of this American government, just handed Libya over to Al-Qaeda. Yeah. You want to hear the rest? Yeah, please. No, please go on. Yeah, jump in if you, if you like. Number six, rule of law, dead on arrival. Bernie Madoff, the CFTC allowing J.P. Morgan carte blanche, Goldman Sachs high-frequency trading, mortgage fraud, TARP, trillions to foreign banks, as Ron Paul's limited uh, audit of the Federal Reserve revealed. Number seven, MF Global, commingling client funds, hundreds of millions of dollars missing. And guess what? Headed by John Corzine, a former partner at none other than Goldman Sachs. Number eight, the newly appointed prime minister of Italy, Mario Monti is the international advisor to Goldman Sachs. Wow. It's unbelievable, Daniel. I mean, we live under a complete illusion of liberty and honor, and the American people need to wake up. Here's number nine, the euro collapse. Let me read you this quote from financial expert Eddie Hobbs, who said over the weekend, quote, Italy is unsavable. The point is there isn't a solution. And plan B is to recognize that we are now at an elevated risk of the euro itself as a currency collapsing. If you have any cash at all, you need to seriously consider getting some of that cash out of euro and out of this jurisdiction. The ideal safe haven is gold. He says the rich are moving their money as we speak. And number 10, the best possible example of this madness of our lost society is moral bankruptcy. The Penn State child rape sex scandal, the students at Penn State riot when their football team's coach, Joey P, was fired for his role in the cover-up of a decade or more of child rape, which he himself had more power than anybody else to put an end to. America's priorities are a joke, which is why unconstitutional wars without end are here to stay. No, I, I agree, and I think it's uh, just 100% dead on the, the 10 illusions in our the the mad lost the mad society we live in um you know when you look at this stuff though how do you how do you deal with that as an individual who number one is in the know because it's such a minority and what do you what do you tell other people i mean how do how do you relay this message to your family and to your friends in your personal life sean well, I've said this before in uh, in other conversations fo with folks, and you really do need to, sadly, you need to compartmentalize. Because, you know, I, I didn't compartmentalize very well, Daniel, when I worked for that Fortune 50 company. And I assumed that everybody would want to hear this information. I assumed that everybody would want to know the truth. And so I spent too much time in that environment trying to... Um, coach friends and help them understand uh, and, and, and send them documentaries and send them links. And when the information um, isn't welcome, when somebody doesn't want to wake up, each person has to wake up on their own is what I've discovered. So now that I've moved on from that part of my life into this new phase, um, I realize that you need to compartmentalize the information and you really should only bother sharing it with those who want to listen because you can't force it down people's throats. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink, right? So, um, the way I handle it is by, you know, having my blog and, you know, having my website, having the ability to practice my First Amendment rights, to use them so that I don't lose them, and to um, flex my liberty. And I think that's all we can ask of anybody. If everybody was out there flexing their liberty and using their freedom of speech to speak out against power, to speak out against corruption, we could take our country back. In fact, we could take the world back from the maniacal grip of these oligarchs, of these, these bankster criminals who are dead set on enslaving humanity. We could take it back, but it's going to require that all of those that went mad, you know, in a herd to wake up one by one, and they need to wake up quick because Daniel as you know the house of cards is collapsing in Europe and as 
Lindsay Williams, as Bob Chapman, as Harvey Organ, as so many others. James Turk has said, once the euro goes, the dollar won't be far behind. Yeah, I, I recently heard your Lindsay Williams uh, uh, interview, and I found it an, a, the, one of the best interviews he's done. And he's always a very credible person to me. You know, when he was saying oil 150, he had been saying it for a long time. So when it hit 150, you know, it was one of those predictions you could have said, oh, well, it, it was the broken th clock theory. However, he reversed that prediction once it hit, once it neared 150 and said it would go to 50. And that point in time, I'll be honest with you, I said, no way, no way will oil go from 150 to 50. Sure enough, it went from 150 down to the 30s. And now what Lindsey Williams is saying is that by the end of 2012, we could literally have a dollar that is worthless. When you interview people, when you do your research, you, you're obviously preparing your family. You're doing things to protect yourself. What do you see going on over the next year? Well, you know, more of the same, I think, unfortunately. And, you know, the governments have all decided that the race to the bottom needs to continue. They need to continue to print currency, uh, fiat currency, because there are no other solutions. There's no solution for Japan. There's no solution for our country. There's no solution for Greece, Italy, Spain, Portugal. Um, Germany's expected to either bail out the euro uh, zone. Otherwise, the ECB needs to just continue to print money hand over fist. And Germany doesn't want that because they're scared to death hyperinflation, uh, which they should be because in the Weimar Republic, they suffered devastating hyperinflation, which I think is coming here. It may not happen in the next year, as Lindsay Williams, um, you know, has predicted. Uh, it may, who knows, maybe they can string it out for another two years or five years, but the collapse is inevitable. And the smartest people have been saying that for a very long time. Does that mean it's going to happen tomorrow or in the next 12 months, as Lindsay Williams has predicted? I don't know. But I definitely think, as we've seen with MF Global, um, we've seen Lindsey Williams' prediction on a micro level, Daniel, come true, in which he says that even multimillionaires, if they're only in paper, if their investments are only in paper assets, they will lose everything. And we watched that happen in real time with MF Global. People who were in money market accounts lost you know, 30, 40, 50 percent of their money. And there's still hundreds of millions of dollars missing um, from MF Global. So I think that this will all come to pass, and the only thing that you can count on is physical precious metal. It's the only insurance policy that um, that I can advise people to, you know, reasonably consider purchasing. And it falls on deaf ears a lot of times. I'll be honest with you, uh, in my own personal life. And um, but again, going back to the Edmund Burke quote, it stands to reason every person needs to wake up on their own. Yeah, you know. Most people, this this Western society, they have been brainwashed and conditioned into believing that the fiat currency, this this debt backed money that we use, is is legit. It's the real deal. It's it's worth exchanging for goods and services, and so they don't even consider gold and silver. They in fact they think gold and silver is a bubble, when obviously it's it's definitely not a bubble. Um, especially you know central banks weren't buying tech stocks or real estate, but central banks are buying gold. Um, in your search for truth, um, I can tell you for, for, for me, I have learned so much since I came on to YouTube. Um, what are some important people, books and websites that you'd like to recommend to uh, others who are just starting or who may be, uh, pretty deep in it, but want to make sure that we're not missing anybody out there that's important to read or, or, or websites to check. Well, you know, one of one of the books that was a bit central to my awakening, believe it or, believe it or not, uh, was written by a, a liberal uh, author, a female, who I, I do greatly admire. Her name's Naomi Wolf. And uh, she wrote a book called Letters of Warning to a Young Patriot. And she talks about the 10 steps that every draconian government takes, every the 10 draconian measures that every fascist government takes as they close down liberty and as their free society closes. They did it in Germany. Uh, you know, the, Stalin did it. it. It's just a repeat thing that started to unfold really probably under Clinton when they dismantled Glass-Steagall, but um, it really happened in a big way under Bush and now uh, Obama. Uh, these 10 steps are pretty much now complete in this country. You guys can, uh, you know, Google Naomi Wolf's uh, videos. She's done speeches on it. If you don't want to read the whole book, you can uh, watch her give a speech on uh, the 10 steps. I think it's called Letters of Warning to a Young Patriot, Naomi, Naomi Wolf. If you put that in the YouTube search engine, you can watch uh, 
just a gripping 45 minute um, discussion that she gives about that. Um, you know, Russ Baker's book, um, Bush Family of Secrets, also just an absolute eye opener. I mean, you just cannot even believe. Uh, in my fr- in my previous worldview and paradigm, I considered myself a conservative. Um, I identified to some extent with the Republican platform, uh, as a, you know, supposedly related to you know fiscal responsibility and things like that. We now know, Daniel, you and I both know that the the right left paradigm is an absolute joke. Yeah. Um, but uh, that book woke me up because, oh my goodness, if you take a look at the Bush family and their connection to the CIA and Prescott Bush before George Sr., who was the head of the CIA, Prescott Bush working with other oligarchs and banksters to try to overthrow the government, all on record. <laughs> you can tell people that. They'll think you're crazy, but it's absolutely all on record. Skull and bones, secret societies, it's all real. It's all all true. These people um, consider us animals, and uh, they're hell-bent on corralling us and controlling us and taking away our liberties. Um, Michael Michael Chosodesky, who runs the uh, website globalresearch.ca, he's got a great book called uh, America's War on Terrorism, also an eye-opener for me. It taught me all about um, the CIA's role in Afghanistan and how Osama bin Laden worked directly as an asset for the CIA. Um, it's just all interrelated. You've got um, the Grand Chessboard um, by Zygmunt Brzezinski, which laid out everything that's happening now as we get into these conflicts all over the planet. Uh, I told people working in that Fortune 50 company that Obama would not change a thing, and I knew that because Zygmunt Brzezinski was his foreign affairs advisor behind the scenes, and I knew what the Grand Chessboard was. Um, it's all being done by design. The only person we can count on over the next year or two, if we get really lucky and we need God to intervene here to make this happen, because God knows the news media is not going to give us a fair shake, is if Ron Paul can become president. That that might be our last, best, greatest hope at turning this thing around. Well, I can tell you um, my wife is finally letting me uh, do something uh, crazy, I guess, uh, we're, for our Christmas cards this year. We're, uh, I got... My daughter Grace, who's eight weeks old, my son Joseph, my wife, and I all have uh, Ron Paul shirts we're wearing uh, in the Christmas cards. So hopefully it'll get, uh, hopefully it'll spur people with enough curiosity to at least Google him and see what's uh, what's got us so worked up. Fantastic! Send me one, would you? <laughs> I'll <laughs> we'll do. give you my address. Hey, Sean, if somebody'd like to ask you a question, what's the best way they can reach you? Well, I think the best way to reach me is to send me a personal message through YouTube. I look at that account daily, so that's that's a good way to do it. Um, you could also email me at sgtreport at gmail.com, but I'd really recommend PMing me through YouTube because I, I'm truly on that account more often on a daily basis, and I always return every PM I've ever gotten. I take the time to send a reply, and with SGT Report, um, sometimes it gets a little bit unmanageable, so... You may not get a reply if you send me uh, a question there, but by all means, please PM me through my YouTube channel, which is pretty easy to do. Sean, thank you so much for what you're doing, and uh, yeah, I, I truly hope that people like you are inspiring others to create YouTube channels, to, to blog, to and to create blogs. I mean, that's huge. If we can get more more articles and information to people uh, in, a, in a big way where we're making a difference. So I really appreciate everything you're doing, and I, I honestly hope... I think you're a true patriot, so thank you for what you're doing. Oh, well, it's an honor for me to uh, be able to speak with you and good people like you, and uh, I really appreciate it. Thanks for asking me to uh, to uh, be a part of this today with you, Daniel. I appreciate it. Thanks, Sean.